Chapter 1 Happy Birthday, Chuck It was early in the morning on Wednesday the 12th. Gromit the dog sat at the table in the kitchen of the little house at 62 West Wallaby Street and made breakfast. Suddenly, he remembered something. He got up from the table and went to look at the calendar near the door. Wednesday the 12th was his birthday. There it was on the calendar in blue pen. Gromit's birthday. Gromit took a pen and put a big blue X through the number 12. It's my birthday today and my friend Wallace is sleeping, he thought. And he felt sad. Wallace wasn't a dog. He was a man and Gromit lived with him at 62 West Wallaby Street. Gromit looked at his watch. It was nine o'clock. Just then, he heard a noise at the front door. There! That's the postman, he thought. Perhaps I'm going to get some birthday cards this morning. Let's go and see. There were six letters by the front door when Gromit arrived there, and he looked at all of them carefully. Most of them were letters for Wallace, letters in brown envelopes asking for money. But there was one envelope, a green one, for Gromit. With all six letters in his mouth, Gromit ran back to the kitchen. Suddenly, a toy train shot out in front of him. He stopped for a minute. The train went past, and then he ran on, back to the breakfast table. There were lots of different machines in Wallace and Gromit's house in West Wallaby Street. Back in the kitchen, Gromit sat down at the table and opened the green envelope. It was a birthday card with a picture of a smiling dog on the front, and when he opened it, it played Happy Birthday to You. Gromit put the card on the table and looked at it sadly. Only one birthday card on his birthday. Just then, a red light over his head began to go on and off. Upstairs, Wallace was in bed. There was a red button next to his bed. It said breakfast on it. Wallace hit it again and again. Breakfast, said the red light in the kitchen over Gromit's head. Down in the kitchen, Gromit moved a lever behind his chair. At once, up in Wallace's room, the head of the bed moved up. At the same time, a door opened in the floor at the foot of the bed. The table in the kitchen was right under this door. Suddenly, Wallace shot out of bed, crying, Gromit! He shot down through the door in the floor and was soon downstairs, sitting in his chair at the kitchen table. Well, Gromit, my getting up in the morning machine worked well, said Wallace, and he began to eat his breakfast. But uh, perhaps I can make it work better. I hit the chair very fast that time. Oh, cracking breakfast, Gromit. He went on. Gromit read his newspaper and said nothing. Any letters today? asked Wallace. Gromit gave him his letters. Wallace opened the first brown envelope and took out a very long letter asking him for lots of money. Oh dear, said Wallace, looking at the long letter carefully. He looked at all the brown envelopes in his hand. We must be more careful with money, Gromit. A Gromit put his birthday card on the table. It played Happy Birthday slowly and sadly. But Wallace wasn't interested in birthday cards just then. Wallace went to look in his money box. There was only 30 pence in it. Look at that, he said. And those presents weren't cheap. He put his hand over his mouth and looked at Gromit. Oh, no, he didn't want Gromit to know about his presence just then. 
Gromit looked at Wallace, and his ears went up excitedly. Perhaps I'm going to get something more for my birthday, he thought. Well, Gromit, what's on the 905 train? said Wallace. Oh, look, here it comes now. Wallace's little toy train came through the kitchen door and shot past the table. Quickly, Wallace took a little present off it. What's this? he said, and he put the present on the table in front of Gromit. Happy birthday, Chuck! Gromit quickly opened his birthday present. It was a red dog collar and lead. You wanted a collar? said Wallace, laughing. Here, let's put it on you. Wallace helped Gromit to put on his collar. Now people can see you come from a good home, he said. But that isn't all. Come and look in here. A grommet went into the front room. Something stood there in the dark. A new machine, perhaps. It began to make a noise, and it came out from behind the door. It was a big, walking present. It walked nearer and nearer to Gromit on its two big legs. Gromit felt very afraid. Suddenly, the thing stopped, and Gromit saw a small card on the front of it. To Gromit, love Wallace, said the card. Because Gromit was afraid, in the end, Wallace opened this second present. But what was it? Green and black trousers? Yes, but they were trousers with blue buttons and red levers. They're techno trousers, said Wallace. Chapter 2 Room for Rent I think you're going to like these techno trousers, Wallace said. He put one end of Gromit's new lead on his collar and the other end on the trousers. Then he hit some blue buttons and moved some red levers. Time for a walk. Ten, uh, no, twenty minutes, he said. Now what's happening, thought Gromit. Suddenly... The techno trousers began walking out of the door, and Gromit, in his collar and lead, went sadly with them. Have a nice walk, Gromit, Wallace laughed. There was a sign in the park. All dogs on a lead, it said. But when Gromit arrived, he didn't have his new lead on. Where was it? On a toy dog. So in the end, Gromit played happily in the park, and the techno trousers took the toy dog for a walk. At home, in 62 West Wallaby Street, Wallace sat in the kitchen. He had all the letters asking for money on the table in front of him. It's no good. We need some more money, he said. He wrote out a sign and put it in the front window of the house. Spare room for rent, it said. Gromit saw the sign when he came back from the park. Later that day, Wallace and Gromit sat in the front room. Did you have a nice walk, Chuck? asked Wallace. How were the techno trousers? Gromit looked at him sadly and said nothing. Suddenly, they heard a ring at the front door. There's someone at the door, Gromit. Wallace quickly got up and went to open the front door. Gromit stayed in his chair, but his ears went up and he listened carefully to everything through the open door. Are you here about the room? asked Wallace. Oh, that's grand. Come in. The next minute, a penguin walked quietly into 62 West Wallaby Street with a little black bag. 
he went upstairs with Wallace. I'm asking twenty pounds a week. That's with breakfast, Wallace said to the penguin. They walked past Gromit's room. It's cheap because it's a dark room, said Wallace, opening the door to the spare room. But we can soon make it nice. The penguin took one look at the dark and dirty spare room and ran into Gromit's room. Uh, no, wait a minute, said Wallace. You can't. But the penguin got up on Gromit's bed, opened his bag, sat back happily and began listening to the radio. Uh, yes, well, uh, that's okay then, said Wallace slowly and he left the penguin in Gromit's room, closed the door, and went downstairs. With the penguin now in Gromit's room, Gromit moved into the spare room. It's okay, Gromit. We can soon make it nice, said Wallace. Of course, they had the techno trousers to help them. The penguin was very, very interested in those when he saw them. Gromit couldn't sleep in his bed in the spare room that night because he could hear the penguin's radio. He went downstairs, but he could hear the radio there too. Angrily, he went upstairs again to speak to the penguin, but he couldn't open the door to his room, and there was no answer when he knocked on it. In the end, Gromit went out sadly into the garden but he could hear the radio out there, too. Very late that night, the penguin arrived home. He went into the house, up to his room, and to bed. Then the radio stopped, and everything went quiet. In the garden, Gromit put his head in his hands and cried quietly. Chapter 3 Penguin That's Grand The next day, when Gromit went to the bathroom, there was someone in there. Gromit waited. Wallace walked past. Good morning, Gromit, he said happily, and he went down to breakfast. Then the penguin came out of the bathroom. Later, when Gromit sat down for breakfast, Wallace put his feet up. The penguin quickly brought his slippers to him. Thank you very much, penguin. That's grand, said Wallace, putting his feet into the slippers. Gromit usually took Wallace his newspaper when it came in the morning, but now the penguin got to the front door and back with a newspaper before Gromit. What do you think of that, Gromit? asked Wallace. Our new friend's a great help, he laughed. Gromit looked at Wallace and the penguin, and he felt angrier and angrier. That evening, Gromit went out into the garden again. Through the window, he could see Wallace and the penguin eating and drinking happily in the back room. More cheese, penguin? asked Wallace. Gromit looked away sadly. He went into his kennel and put two or three of his most important things into a red and white bag. Before he left, he took an old photo of Wallace in his hands and looked at it for a minute or two. Then he put the photo down, put on his yellow coat and hat, put his bag on his back and walked off into the rain. Good night, penguin. Sleep well, called Wallace. Under the cold rain, Gromit slowly walked away from his kennel, away from his home in West Wallaby Street, and away from his old friend Wallace. From the house, the penguin watched Gromit go, and was happy. Then he went off to find the Techno Trousers. The next morning, Gromit got up early after a night sleeping in a bin in the street. At home, 
in West Wallaby Street, Wallace was happy in his bed. He opened his eyes slowly. Just then, the head of his bed moved up, and the door opened in the floor at the foot of the bed. Wallace shot out of bed, through the door in the floor, and down into the kitchen. But this time, he didn't land in his usual brown trousers. He landed in the techno trousers. They're the wrong trousers, he cried. Then the trousers moved, but there was no control panel on the front of them to stop them. Where's the control panel? cried Wallace. Stop them, Gromit! Get me out of these trousers! But Gromit wasn't there, and the techno trousers didn't stop. They walked out of the front door and down the street with Wallace in them. Gromit looked at a sign in a shop window. Spare room to rent. Cheap, it said. Oh, good, he thought. He read more. No dogs, the sign went on. Oh, no, thought Gromit. Then he saw a picture of a chicken in the window. Help us to find this chicken and you get... One thousand pounds, Gromit read. He looked at the picture carefully. Did he know that chicken's face? Just then, Wallace ran past in the techno trousers. Help, Gromit, he cried. They're the wrong trousers. Gromit ran after his old friend. What's wrong with the techno trousers, he thought. And then, in the street in front of him, he saw the penguin. What's he got there? thought Gromit. Quietly, he moved nearer, and then he saw. The penguin had the control panel. Now Gromit understood. With the buttons and levers, the penguin could make the techno trousers move here and there, up and down, and Wallace couldn't stop him. In the end, the techno trousers took Wallace home. He felt very tired by then. Because he couldn't get out of the techno trousers, he went to bed in them, and he went to sleep at once. Chapter 4 Watching and waiting. Gromit was in a coffee shop. He looked over his newspaper at the street and saw the penguin walking past. He quickly put his newspaper down, left some money for his coffee on the table and went out into the street after the penguin. Soon the penguin stopped in front of a big old building. What's he doing here? thought Gromit. Suddenly, the penguin looked behind him. Gromit quickly hid behind some bins. Then the penguin looked back at the big old building and began writing lots of things down in a little book. Gromit got under an old box and moved slowly nearer to the old building. But how could he see out now? Easy. He took out a little red knife, made a hole in the front of the box, and looked carefully through it. Now the penguin had a yellow tape measure in his hand. First he looked up at a high window over his head. After that, he made his tape measure very long and put one end of it up on the ledge in front of the high window. And then, when the other end of the tape measure went up, the penguin shot up with it and landed on the high window ledge. Up there, on the ledge, the penguin looked at the big window in front of him carefully. He measured it from left to right, and up and down, and he wrote lots more things down in his little book. When he finished writing, he put his book under his arm 
and he put one end of the tape measure on the window ledge again. And then, when the other end of the tape measure went down, the penguin came down with it and landed in the street. He began walking past Gromit's box. Suddenly, he stopped and looked right at the box. Oh no, he knows I'm in here, thought Gromit, and he watched and waited. But in the end, the penguin only looked at the box for a minute and then walked on. Soon after that, Gromit came out from under the box and ran back to 62 West Wallaby Street. He got there before the penguin and at once went upstairs into his old room, now the penguin's room. He found something very interesting on the penguin's table. It was a picture of the big old building and all the different rooms in it. It was the town museum. And there, in the diamond room on the second floor, not far from the window, was a big blue diamond. Of course, thought Gromit. The penguin wants to get the blue diamond from the museum. Just then, he heard the back door open and close. Oh no, the penguin's back, thought Gromit. Where can I hide now? There was no time to run away. So in the end, Gromit hid in bed next to Wallace. When he looked out, he saw the penguin bringing a big box into Wallace's room. Then the penguin put the box down, and Gromit saw the red glove on his head. At once, he remembered the picture of the chicken in the shop window. So he's the chicken, thought Gromit, and he hid again quickly. Now the penguin took a red helmet out of the box and put it on Wallace's head. Wallace slept happily through this. With the control panel of the techno trousers, the penguin made Wallace get out of bed, walk downstairs, and leave the house. Wallace slept through all this, and the penguin walked down the street after him to the town museum. At the same time, back in Wallace's room, the getting up machine began working. The head of the bed moved up, the door opened in the floor at its foot, and Gromit shot down through it. He landed in Wallace's brown trousers at the kitchen table and there he got breakfast all over his face. Chapter 5 Ups and Downs Wallace and the Penguin walked through the dark streets to the museum, and Wallace didn't open his eyes once. When they arrived at the museum, the penguin moved some levers on the control panel. Then he jumped up on the techno trousers, and at once they began to walk up the wall of the museum. Soon the trousers arrived at the high window, and here the penguin jumped off and landed on the window ledge. He looked through the window at the beautiful blue diamond, and moved some more levers on the control panel. The techno trousers went higher up the wall with Wallace in them. At last, they arrived at the roof. There they walked up, over, and down an air vent, through the roof, and down into the museum. And Wallace slept through it all. Now the penguin could see the techno trousers through the window. They came down through an air vent in the ceiling walked over the ceiling tiles in the long room and came nearer and nearer to the diamond room. But Wallace had long arms and the penguin suddenly felt afraid. Those long arms could easily get in front of the alarm and make it ring. So he stopped the trousers for a time. In the end, Wallace moved his arms in his sleep 
and the penguin quickly moved some levers on the control panel and walked him past the alarm. Now the diamond was under him. Then the penguin hit a button on the control panel and the red helmet on Wallace's head opened and a steel machine claw came down out of it. After that, the penguin hit a different button and moved some of the levers on the control panel. The trousers moved and the machine claw went down to the diamond and opened over it. Now the steel claw closed on the diamond and the penguin hit some more buttons. The claw, with the diamond in it, slowly began to go up into Wallace's helmet. Then, suddenly, the diamond shot out of the claw. At once, the penguin moved a lever and hit a button. The steel claw shot down and closed on the diamond again before it hit the floor. Once again, the penguin hit some more buttons and the claw moved up into the helmet with the diamond in it. Then it happened. One of the ceiling tiles came off the ceiling and with it came one of the feet of the techno trousers. At the same time, the helmet opened again and the steel claw with the diamond in moved down in front of the alarm. The alarm began to ring. Lights began to go on and off. Wallace opened his eyes. Where am I? What's that noise? He cried. At the same time, a big steel door closed in front of him. How could the penguin get the diamond out of the museum now? The air vent was in the long room behind the steel door. Grommet! Grommet! cried Wallace. The penguin hit some buttons and moved some levers on the control panel. The techno trousers walked to the window and stood on it. At once, the window opened and Wallace was out in the cold, standing on a high window, looking up at the night sky. Now the trousers moved and he could see the dark street under him. Get me down, cried Wallace. Help! Then the penguin jumped on Wallace's back and the techno trousers quickly walked down the wall and ran away. You can't do this to me, cried Wallace. Stop it at once. I'm a good man, I am. Chapter 6 Be careful, lad. The penguin took Wallace back to his room at 62 West Wallaby Street. There, Wallace took off the helmet and put it down. There, too, the penguin took the red glove off his head. Oh, it's you, said Wallace, for he saw now it wasn't a chicken standing in front of him, but the penguin. Then he got angry. Get me out of these trousers this minute, he said. In answer, the penguin quickly put Wallace into a wardrobe and closed the door behind him. Help! Open this door at once, cried Wallace in the wardrobe, and he knocked on the door angrily. The penguin took the diamond from the helmet and put it in a bag. Then he walked to the door. But Gromit stood at the door. He was angry and he had a big rolling pin in his hands. At once, the penguin took out a big black gun. When he saw that, Gromit put his rolling pin down. Now the penguin opened the wardrobe door. Gromit got in with Wallace, and the penguin closed the door again. In the dark, Gromit began to put his hands down the front of the techno trousers. What are you doing? cried Wallace. Be careful, lad. Gromit put the end of a red wire on the end of a black wire, and the legs of the techno trousers began to move up and down, faster 
and faster. Soon the wardrobe broke away from the floor and the trousers walked it out of the room with Wallace and Gromit in it. Where are we going? I can't see a thing, cried Wallace. Then the wardrobe door opened and Gromit came out. The penguin jumped on the banister and went down it with the gun in his hand and the diamond bag on his back. He landed on the front of Wallace's toy train. Get him, Gromit, cried Wallace from in the wardrobe. Then the wardrobe began to go downstairs with Wallace in it. Gromit jumped up at once and caught the ceiling lamp. The penguin shot the lamp down from the ceiling and Gromit landed near the back of Wallace's toy train with the lamp on his head. The train went off quickly down the track. The penguin was now behind the little blue train engine. He looked back and shot at Gromit again and again with his gun. But Gromit wasn't afraid. He had a lamp for a helmet on his head, and he wanted to catch the penguin. Suddenly, he saw the train getting near the back door. Oh no, the penguin's going to get away, he thought. He hit a red button by the track, and the train went off to the left. It's okay, Gromit, cried Wallace. He now stood on the last car at the end of the train on one leg of the techno trousers. I'm behind you, lad, he called. Now the penguin shot his gun at Wallace's feet, and Wallace's car jumped off the track and began to run on a new track next to the first. Stay there, Gromit. Everything's okay, called Wallace and he moved past his friend and got near the penguin. Give me that gun, cried Wallace. He put out his hand and took the gun from the penguin. But suddenly, the techno trousers hit the wall and Wallace came out of them, went through a hole in the wall and landed on a kitchen trolley. At once, Gromit took the lamp off his head and began to move to the front of the train. Wallace went past him again. This time he was on his trolley and he had a net in his hands. I'm going to get that penguin now, he cried. But then Wallace's net hit something on the wall and this knocked him off the trolley. He landed back on the train. The penguin hit a little lever by the track. The engine, with the penguin on a car behind it, went off along one track. The back of the train, with Gromit on the first car and Wallace on the last car, went off along a different track. Suddenly, Gromit had no more track in front of him. Oh no, we're going to have an accident, he thought. Then he saw a box of new track on the floor, caught it, and quickly began to put the new track down in front of the train. So they went on, under the table and into the next room. There, Gromit's track ran over the penguin's track. At the back of the train, Wallace put out his hands to catch the penguin, but he only caught the little blue toy engine. Then the techno trousers walked in front of the penguin's car and the penguin with the diamond bag on his back, flew up, off the car, and into the kitchen. At the same time, Gromit hit the kitchen cupboard and stopped suddenly. A milk bottle came down off the cupboard and landed in his hand. A second later, the penguin landed in the milk bottle, and the diamond bag landed in Gromit's other hand. We did it, Gromit lad! We caught him, cried Wallace. That afternoon, they took the penguin to the police, and the police put him away in a very strong building for a very long time. That evening, Wallace and Gromit sat in the front room. They were friends again. Now we've got the thousand pounds from the police, we don't need to rent that spare room. Isn't that grand? 
said Wallace happily. Shall we have some cheese, Chuck? When Gromit got up to get the cheese, he looked out of the window at the old techno trousers now in a bin in the street. And we don't need you, he thought happily. He went back into the front room with Wallace's cheese and then sat down to read the newspaper. Out in the street, with no control panel to stop them, the techno trousers got up and walked off into the night.